This channel's mission is to challenge the Vietnam orthodoxy. Much of what you know about the Vietnam War is either incomplete or false. To support this channel and its mission, please subscribe and like the video. I start videos with the comment that much of what you know about the Vietnam War is either incomplete or false. And there is probably no greater falsehood than the idea that the Gulf of Tonkin incident was a false flag operation designed to allow the United States to become more involved in the Vietnam War. In fact, the Gulf of Tonkin incident was two incidents, one that took place on August 2nd, 1964, and one that took place two days later on the 4th. The first incident involved the firing of several torpedoes at the USS Maddox. The USS Maddox was on a DeSoto patrol. The DeSoto patrols were intelligence gathering operations. They started with cruisers off the coast of communist China. And then in 1964, the patrols were expanded to cover North Vietnam. Now, what was the purpose of the DeSoto patrols? It was to gather signals intelligence, SIGINT. The USS Maddox had a shipping container essentially bolted to the deck, and in that shipping container was communications equipment and people to operate the equipment. There were other SIGINT facilities relevant to Vietnam in the Philippines and also at, I believe, Pu Bai in South Vietnam. In fact, the Army and Navy had facilities co-located at Pu Bai. So the question then is, well, why do you need the Maddox if there is SIGINT capability at Pu Bai? What the Maddox provided with its equipment was better short-range intercepts. Simply put, Pu Bai couldn't pick up short-range communications. So on August 2nd, the Maddox was cruising the coast of North Vietnam, listening to radio communication. Now, depending on who you listen to, the Maddox was either in North Vietnamese territorial waters or in international waters. Both are true, and the reason for that is that North Vietnam claimed territorial waters that were not internationally recognised. It's also suggested quite often that the Maddox was involved in Op Plan 34 Alpha. Op Plan 34 Alpha were covert operations, basically commando operations against facilities in North Vietnam, carried out by the South Vietnamese and mercenaries uh, under the control of the United States. Initially, those operations were controlled by the South, who then, I think in 1961, handed over control to the United States. The Maddox was not directly involved in Op Plan 34 Alpha. The information that it gathered would have been useful to Op Plan 34 Alpha planners, but it was not directly involved. And in fact, on August 2nd, an Op Plan 34 Alpha mission passed by close to the Maddox, but it was not directly involved. The actual attack on the Maddox was carried out by several motor torpedo boats. The attack was not ordered by Hanoi, it was ordered by a much lower commander. And in fact a recall order was sent out during the attack but it was too late to stop it. There is absolutely no doubt whatsoever that the August 2nd attack took place. There is in fact a museum dedicated, or at least there are exhibits dedicated to the August 2nd attack, I believe at a museum in Haiphong. There is absolutely no question that August 2nd happened. The controversy is around the August 4th incident. Now you have to bear in mind that President Johnson did not respond to the August 2nd attack. What Washington decided to do was to reinforce the Maddox and send a patrol back out on the 4th, this time a little further away from the North Vietnamese coast. The second destroyer that joined the Maddox was the Turner Joy. This was purely to um, avoid a situation where the United States was chased out of, the, out of the Gulf of Tonkin. It was a statement of intent, we will not be chased out. That's all the mission really was about. The destroyers were keyed up and ready for action on August 4th, but no attack took place. General quarters then ended in the evening. So we're dealing with a situation here where it's dark, where the sailors on board both ships are keyed up and expecting combat. The sea's quite rough, and also to add to that, you have a radar anomaly. What that means is specific to the Gulf of Tonkin, you will get radar anomalies being picked up. So the radar operators are looking at their sets on the evening and night of August 4th, and they're seeing returns. It's also raining, so you've got the combination of those radar anomalies. You've got also waves and rain squalls that provide returns to those radars. So it looks to those guys that there are boats in the water preparing to attack the two destroyers. The destroyers then engaged those targets. Aircraft are launched from at least one, I think there were two carriers, 
the aircraft pilots do not spot anything, but the two destroyers are engaging something. But that something is false radar returns. Some of the sailors on board actually reported seeing torpedo wakes in the water. By midnight, one o'clock, the whole thing's over, and it's reported to Washington that the two destroyers were under attack. Johnson immediately decides to initiate retaliation immediate retaliation so, so as soon as the first reports come in Johnson is, is has decided that the United States is going to retaliate with bombing strikes against North Vietnam now why does he do that the conspiracy theorists would say well it's because he wanted to get the United States into the war but you have to bear in mind that this is presidential election year he's running against Barry Goldwater and Goldwater's a hawk and Johnson knows if he doesn't retaliate that Goldwater will use that against him. Johnson is soft on communism, so he quickly reacts. The actual retaliation, the retaliatory strikes are rushed. They're not performed particularly well. They're disjointed because the whole thing is rushed. Johnson goes on TV to tell the American people about the strikes even before they've hit their targets. So Johnson's motivation is not to get the United States more into the Vietnam War, it's to make sure that he doesn't lose face in the presidential election race. Now, as this is developing, the commander of the destroyer group is reporting up the chain of command that something isn't right with what's happened. He doesn't believe the bulk of the attack happened, but he still believes the initial ambush took place. Now, we can be 99.999% certain that that didn't happen. But bear in mind, there are sailors on those destroyers that actually, probably to this day, believe the attack took place. There are also radio intercepts received, which again, up the chain of command, people are looking at that and thinking, an attack has happened. The radio intercepts are actually after action reports from August 2nd. There's also a situation where, I think it's the uh, intercept at Pubai, receives a message, and take a Vietnamese phrase, that can mean one of two things, that the boat could be moving to be repaired or into the attack. And they take the latter interpretation. So the whole thing is a mess. The whole thing is a complete mess. And if the, the Americans had taken more time to examine the situation, they may well not have responded on August 4th. So the retaliatory airstrikes go in, do a moderate amount of damage. Gotta bear in mind here that McNamara sees military force as a method to send signals to North Vietnam. And this signal is completely disastrous. What McNamara and Johnson are most terrified of all is that the Chinese become directly involved in the fighting. But also they're terrified that North Vietnam is going to send NVA regulars down the Ho Chi Minh Trail through Laos and into South Vietnam. And that's exactly what they do. So where does this, the myth come from of this false flag operation designed to get the United States more involved in the Vietnam War? Well, it's the communist position. It's the communist interpretation of it. Hanoi, knows that the August 4th attack did not take place. So the only logical explanation they can come to is that the Americans have just made it all up in order to justify greater involvement. And that's why they start pushing the NVA down the Ho Chi Minh Trail. The first NVA regular units start appearing in November 1964. The Viet Cong also believe, and remember the Viet Cong are controlled by Hanoi. The Hanoi like to pretend that the Viet Cong were an independent nationalist organization. They were not. They were controlled by Hanoi. But the VC decide, if the Americans are going to show up with all their firepower, we need to win this quickly. So they step up their attack, which is how you wind up getting to the summer of 1965 and the intense pressure on the Saigon government. It's because North Vietnam has escalated the conflict because they feel they have to, because they think that the United States is about to intervene. The United States ends up intervening anyway, but it's in reaction to communist action in South Vietnam. So that's the origin of the myth of the false flag. The Americans genuinely believed an attack had taken place on the 4th, even though it hadn't. Just to really lay this to rest, as I said, we know the August 2nd incident happened. That is not under debate. We know that happened. There's the SIGINT, there's the, the acceptance that it happened by the North Vietnamese. So we know August 2nd happened. So if you're going to say, well, the August 4th incident was still a false flag, why would you stage a second incident on August 4th? Why would you do that? If you have a genuine, provable incident on the 2nd, in which torpedoes were fired at the Maddox, why would you stage a second incident on the 4th? It doesn't make sense. It really doesn't make sense. The Gulf of Tonkin incident, quote unquote, is an example of confusion, of things just going wrong, of misinterpretation, of human error. That's 
the reality of the Gulf of Tonkin incident. It is not a false flag. It is not a way to, for the Americans to get into the war. Remember, Johnson didn't want to get into the war. He was trying to concentrate on his Great Society program. That's what he had as his top priority. Vietnam was a distraction to him. So hopefully that has laid to rest the ghost of the Gulf of Tonkin incident.